Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today you join us in Sweden. We're just north of Stockholm in Mesta at the Wings Training Ice Rink. Now in this video, it's gonna be part of a big series that we're creating in partnership with Starzone Hockey, where we're gonna be looking at the fundamentals of skating development. So whether you're a player, you're a coach, you're a player that's already been skating for some time, or somebody that's just getting to the grips of hockey and some of the fundamentals that you need on the ice, this series is gonna have something that you will be able to benefit from. In this video series, we're gonna be looking at your skating position, strides and glides, your edge control, crossovers, transitions, and also your starts and stops. Now from here, I'm gonna be handing over to Thomas from Starzone Hockey, who's gonna be breaking down these fundamentals on the ice. Let's get to it. But very quickly before I hand over to Thomas, I just wanted to mention that everything you see in this video is a cut down version of all of the drills and exercises for player development, regardless of what age you are, where you are in the world, that you can find in the Starzone app that will be down below in the video description. That goes into much more detail with a lot more insight on everything we're gonna cover in this video and more. But I will mention that currently the app is loaded with a wealth of hockey specific drills and exercises that you can perform off the ice. All of the on ice content that you can see featured in this video in part will be added to the app very shortly. So make sure that you sign up now so you can be the first to see the new drills and exercises specifically for hockey players on the ice as soon as they are available. The skating position is the foundation for all skating development. Making sure as a player you have the mobility in your ankle your knees and your hips to be able to stay in a low position. You also need to have the strength to, to stay in that low position for a longer time. Working with your skating position, you can do, do both on the ice and off the ice. You need to make sure you have the mobility and the strength that is gonna create the perfect skating position for you as a player. A good example of working with your skating position on the ice is doing squats in motion. The squats will help you to develop the right mobility uh, and at the same time create that strength that you need to have in order to have the perfect skating position. Making sure you have the balance and the strength and explosiveness you need to do to have the perfect skating. In order to train this, we will do it both on and off the ice, working with your mobility in your ankle, your knees and hips, and of course the strength part, making sure your legs can stay in that low position that we need to create the perfect stride. As a player, uh, we want to have the highest speed on the ice. That's the end goal for all skating development. And having the best skating position is the foundation to create that. Strides and gliding is about creating the most efficient stride with the highest quality. Our goal is to create as high speed as possible with uh, as less energy as possible and if we have the perfect quality with a long stride in full extension we can create a lot of speed without consuming too much energy. In order to train strides and gliding we need to work with our mobility so we can do that full extension and stay in a low position. We can do that both on the ice and off the ice uh, on the ice, we want to make sure we have the right angle, the right starting position, and that full extension. Also, in reference to coordination, we want to have the swinging arms going uh, at the right time together with the leg. As a player, we want to create as much speed as possible on the ice. The end goal is to have a feeling of flying down the ice with a very efficient stride and that we can do that over and over again without getting tired. So working with the, with the strides and gliding is all about that. A good example drill for, drill for strides and gliding is sea cuts with arm swinging, where we will train of reaching that full extension in the stride, the right starting position, and at the same time swing our arms in order to create the most power. The edge control area is about having control on the inside and outside edges, independent if we're on one skate or two skates, 
if we're going to turn right or left going forward or backwards. The, the edge control is also the foundation for the crossover skating, so working with the edge control is very important to lay that foundation. What the end goal for the player is, is to be able to turn any way they want in any situation, fooling the opponent by changing direction and having the edge control and making it possible to do that independent on where we are will help you win situations on the ice. We train edge control mainly on the ice, it's also possible to do off the ice, but on the ice we can do it very efficiently from very young ages. It's important to start doing it slowly because uh, we need to get that uh, upper body rotation in place, moving the head towards where we're skating and getting that edge control one piece at a time. As we train edge control and develop, we can do it quicker and quicker on bigger eyes but our recommendation is to start doing it, for, for example, in a figure eight uh, movement. And one of the example drills that we have is doing inside and outside edges in a figure eight. You can do that with a lot of stations, having a lot of players doing it at the same time, working with all of those details, moving the upper body, getting the head rotating, um, getting the stick in the right position, always imagining you have the puck on the stick doing the exercises. And that way it makes it easier when we want to add puck later on. The transition area is about changing direction without losing any speed. The, the game of hockey flows in different directions and you need to be able to change from forward to backwards or backward to forwards, going any way you want in any situation. Working with your transitions will help you make that uh, quicker and without losing any speed. As a player, you want to do, you want to be able to do that in any game situation, independent being on one skate, two skates, forward or backwards. Working with training of transitions is most efficient doing on the ice. Working with finding that right blade position in each transition, opening your hip and having the possibility in the end of each transition to push off in a stride going in that new direction you want to go. A good example of doing that is working in a figure eight going from forward to backward skating and then going back to forward skating. Going the full rotation from forward backward to forward. Make sure you work with all of those small little details, finding the blade position, opening your hip and pushing away. This will help you gain time in game situations. As always guys, a big thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. Just remember that everything that you've seen in this video is a cut down version of all of the different drills and exercises for both on ice and off ice for players of all ages that you can find in the Starzone app. So if you want more detail, more drills, more development, the link will be down below in the video description for you to be able to pick it up. Make sure you thumbs up, subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode and also the next video in the series that we're filming here with Starzone.